the little ones? That is not We've true. already that seen the demise been, of them. Excuse me, that has never happened. There have been very careful studies made of what has happened to the concentration of industry in this country over the past hundred years. And except in those areas where government has stepped in, it is not true that the biggies have eaten up the smallies. In fact, it's often been the other way. And Kmart is a good example. It started from nothing. Sears was already a major conglomerate. Mm -hmm. And Sears has been losing, <laughs> losing ground and going downhill, and Kmart has been rising. All right, just one question before this audience yeah. is anxious to ask you. And when you sit in your study and uh, throughout your, your career as, an ac as a professor, you've met students, and you've, you've probably dealt with every kind of question, stupid through. I guess I want to know whether you've ever temp been tempted to become politically revolutionary. Here's my question. When you see around the globe the maldistribution of wealth, the, the desperate plight of millions of people in underdeveloped countries, uh, when you see so few haves and so many have-nots, when you, when you see the greed and the concentration of power within, don't, aren't you ever, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism? And whether greed's a good idea to run on? Well, first of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. <laughs> this, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from, a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. If you want to know where the masses are worth, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear. That there is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of the ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. But it seems to reward not virtue as much as ability to manipulate the system. Uh, and what does reward virtue? You think the uh, communist commissar rewards virtue? You think a Hitler rewards virtue? You think, excuse me, if you'll pardon me, do you think American presidents reward virtue? Do they choose their appointees on the basis of the virtue of the people appointed or on the basis of their political clout? Is it really true that political self-interest is nobler somehow than economic self-interest? You know, I think you're taking a lot of things for granted. And just tell me where in the world you find these angels who are going to organize society for us. Well, I don't even trust you to do that. <laughs> we'll let, alone, let alone myself. <laughs> One of the nice things about having your own show is when you, you're able to say at any time, any time, we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Friedman, the economist, is here, yes. Yeah, I, first of all, I want to say I loved my Corvair. I would have helped a whole lot to get through this winter. <laughs> How do people like Ralph Nader get to, to do the things, the great things that they do? Does somebody hire them, you know, or is it us that put these people into whatever it is that does it? Of course it's we who do it. We do it by providing them with assistance. We do it by providing them with political clout, by electing people whom they recommend. And that's a good thing. I'm, I don't object to that. We want a free society, a free democracy, in which uh, if somebody, if a Ralph Nader, uh, has certain views, he ought to be free to express them. People who agree with him ought to be free to contribute money to help him pursue his objectives. Uh, they ought to be free to vote for people he recommends. If, if he doesn't have that freedom, how can I expect to have the freedom to argue the opposite point of view? So I don't believe there's anything wrong at all in the fact that Ralph has been able to get so much influence, except that I wish he had been, uh, he had been using his extraordinary powers in a better cause. Uh, we should also make the point that for all your misgivings about Ralph Nader, he is not crazy about regulatory agencies either. And he, for a long time, and maybe even before you, wondered aloud about the appropriate uh, function of the CAB in regulating airline fares. And if any, any 
thesis has been demonstrated it's that it's been certainly been that over these past several months with deregulation suddenly what do you know there are no empty seats on an airplane no no you're quite right i see ab has been a marvelous uh, accidental example but so far as ralph nader and regulation is concerned you are quite right some of the groups under his con uh, organization have produced reports on icc and so on that are excellent reports on the evils of regulation the problem is that his solution is more of the same. His solution is to substitute a different kind of regulation. His only objection is not really to regulation, but that the wrong people have been doing the regulating. And so when you ask not what's wrong with what we've been doing, but how should we improve matters, he doesn't really have an effective alternative. What do you think is going to happen with the inflation? Will it continue at the same rate that we've been having? Well. Inflation doesn't ever continue quite at the same rate we've been having, but unfortunately, I cannot bring you any good news about inflation. Inflation has been on the rise. It's now running about 13%, 12% on a year-over-year -year basis. We may get some minor relief in the next year or so. I think it may go down to 8 or 9% at the lowest. But I am afraid that we will then be off on another round of the roller coaster. The path we have been on for the past 20 years is a roller coaster. We get up to a peak, we come down, we get up, but each peak is higher than the pre prior one, each trough is higher than the prior one. And until the American people have the political will to stop it, that's going to continue. Now give us the will. Tell us how we get that will. There's only one way you can stop inflation, and that's by having the government create less money and spend less money. And the reason we have inflation is because the public at large wants inflation. You people want inflation. You don't say so. No one of you will say, I want inflation. But I ask you, do you want the prices at which you sell things to go down? Not the prices at which you sell them. You want the prices at which you buy them to go down. What everybody wants is for the prices of the things he buys to go down and the prices of the things he sells to go up. But that's a neat trick if you can manage it. But isn't it, isn't it good old Adam Smith? Isn't that what he Of course, is? it's good old Adam Smith provided you have a control in terms of the total amount of money available, but it's not good old Adam Smith for those printing presses to be pouring out paper oh, money, okay. which, uh, which you and I and the government in particular can use. We don't, we don't create inflation by our personal behavior. We create inflation by getting our legislators, the people in Washington, to vote for more and more spending and by objecting to extra taxes and therefore by having it financed by printing money. Right. Let me just ask you one more basic question here, and I promise we'll get this audience in the act here. Um, did Adam Smith, or do you, pers how do you feel about this desperate need to grow? We have this We have no desperate need to grow. Oh, we do. We brag about our gross national product. It's going to be a don't trillion. Have a desperate need a guy's to grow. got two franchises. He wants six. A man has three hamburger stands. He wants 12. We have no desperate need to grow. We have a desperate desire to grow, and those are quite different. I believe that the level of growth in this country ought to be whatever people want it to be. If the people at large, if each and every person separately was satisfied with where he is and didn't want to grow, fine. I have no objection. I don't want to impose growth on anybody. I want people to be free yeah. to but, pursue their own objectives. But it so happens that the American people have been a very dynamic, forward-looking people, and they have wanted to improve their conditions. But does, they does haven't been wanting to stay But does still. numbers necessarily improve it? Haven't, hasn't the last 30 years an, demonstrated that that we, hasn't worked? No, we haven't had an increase in numbers, and the last 30 years has not demonstrated that. Most people in this country are better off today uh. than they were uh, 30 years ago, although they're worse off than they were six or seven or eight years right. ago. Right. Just one, let me chase you down one more time on this. General Motors wants to grow as well. That's yeah, okay with of you. Of course. They have a natural desire to grow. Huh? Right. Okay. But other people have an, also a natural desire, and other people check it. The oh. check to General Motors growth is Toyota and Volkswagen. It's checker cab. Well, I think it's, it's interesting that the American checks have come Motors. from uh, outside this country. They uh, haven't, always, they haven't okay. always come right. from outside so General, this But country. the point I'm making is General Motors has more power to grow. No. General Motors...